Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Bitcoin and specifically what it has done in the downtrend after each bull market charge. So if you love the sound of that and you want to follow more about that on the channel, make sure you've hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Hit all so you're updated with the content. Make sure you've liked the video up as well. It does go a long way to helping out the channel and for the video to reach more people. Instagram and Twitter are down below. Let's go ahead. All right, so we're looking at the market caps first, as we always do. Market cap, $1.548 trillion, still above our 50% level. Bitcoin, $750 billion again. We're getting awfully close to that trillion dollar mark, uh, and we're up 2.6% on the 24-hour period. We will look at Bitcoin reaching eight straight days up as well. We haven't seen this for some time and we saw nine days back in 2019. So we'll look at the significance of that as well in today's video. Ethereum, 1% and we'll use CoinGecko to give us a better idea of how our altcoins are tracking against Bitcoin and Bitcoin's gains. So we want to see this column, 24 hours and of course seven days to be in the positive. We want to see that in the green so that our altcoins, the risk that we're taking on the alts, are increasing in value against Bitcoin. Some people want to make some more Bitcoin in the downtrends. Uh, but as you can see, most of this is red. We are starting to get some greens in the seven days, which is uh, a nice change for these altcoins. So this is what I'm specifically looking at here. This is the BTC value to Sat uh, the Satoshis versus your USD. This is what tends to happen on influencers. Favorite influencers tell you you're up 20%. And I heard this the other day, say with VeChain, with VET or something like Theta or Matic. And essentially people have been buying their altcoins. Altcoin buys one BTC worth of altcoin at $2. Call it whatever you want. What point one of a Bitcoin, whatever. This is just for numbers, right? So you got one BTC at two bucks. Now your USD value is, is higher. You're up. Altcoin is now with $2.40. And the altcoiner, someone who's holding the altcoin, thinks he's doing well. His favorite influencer says we're up 20% since we talked about it. Great job there. Nice call on those altcoins. But if I show you here, squeeze myself in the corner, what really happened is the altcoiner has lost 60% of their BTC value. You've only got 0.4 of a Bitcoin left, but your US dollar is up. You're probably better off holding Bitcoin during that period. And the funny thing here is that it can be way simpler than we give it credit for. And this just starts to get into the, the realm of it being overly complicated and uh, potentially losing some gains. Now, there are times to do this. I do like to trade some of the altcoins to make more Bitcoin, but I like to take it a little bit more simple and uh, have more of a conservative approach. Other people don't like that. And I guess we just got to make sure we're following our own paths for that. This is just something that I've learned over the last four and a half years. That's often Bitcoin can be an easier, better, way to trade just so much easier in time so let's keep moving across and have a look at this on the chart this is the dominance we're up from yesterday we broke through 49 percent on our way to 50 remember our target here is around that 50 to 53 percent that would be lovely maybe we see a reversal there uh, i would expect us to have some sort of pullback eventually you know we've gone up pretty solidly for one two three four days if we can make it to five six seven great if not you know, I expect a bit of a pullback and maybe come back and test some support levels. Our fear and greed, we're at 50 now. We're at neutral. We've finally left the extreme fear and the fearful side of the market. And we took off yesterday to 50, which means we're not buying any more Bitcoin at the moment. This is where we sit. The closing price from yesterday was at 40,000, looking up here, 40,020 bucks, which means we put that into our plan, $40,020. We've invested $12,000 according to this plan. Our our gains are now uh, $2,000, $2,160, which means we've got a, a total profit of 18%. So not a bad effort from a very simple, straightforward plan. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys that you know, you've, you've picked this up and you're following it for yourself and mixing it up, changing it up and making it better to make it your own plan because this is not a complete plan, nor is it financial advice. It's basically just to give you a bit of a stepping ground on how to start creating your plan so that you're not caught out next time listening to random influencers, including myself, and just telling you these sort of altcoins are great, etc. Stick to a plan. You'll do a hell of a lot better than you give yourself credit for. Now to Bitcoin and what it has done every single time after these big bull market charges. Now I'm going to get rid of these purple sections. It does look very ugly on the chart, but I want to 
demonstrate to you the areas that we're looking for. I'm looking at these areas. These different sections of the market would be a bull market, purple, purple, big run ups. And so I'm looking for what happens on the way down because that's basically the area that we're currently in. So after every charge, we have a down period and it's considerably a long period of time, but I'm not estimating something like three years like we had last time or the time before that. I think maybe we're in some sort of zone like we were 2019, 2021, where we were underneath that previous $14,000 high for about 60 or so weeks. It was just a tad over a year. Now, after each of these bull market periods, so like we just had with the purple circles, we are looking for what happened next. And after that period, I've got plenty of times that we saw the market charge up for about five to six, maybe even seven weeks from a low point in the market. Now, there was a lot of things that came across very similarly. We had increased volume to give us some sort of breakaway above resistance levels, and then we topped out on lowering volume. And at some, in some cases, we also hit our 50% lines. So this is like getting rejected from some sort of moving average, but we use 50% lines uh, so that we can gauge the balance of the market. There's also some tops back here, and of course, some lows that were being put in. So it was pretty strong resistance. It was a double top. This is what happened next. The market tanked, all right? Doesn't mean it has to tank every time. If I go back to the 2017 into 2018, we were heading down, down, down. And then we saw a rally like we're seeing now. The exuberance of the time was much like we're seeing now. Everyone was very excited that we could be taking off to new all-time highs, get past 20,000. Maybe we'll go to 30,000 in 2018. Never happened. We had one, two, three, four, five weeks up. We saw volume come in close to the top. We got rejected just above the 50%. Basically, only had one and a half. Well, we had two weeks of closes above 50 rejected back under and we went down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks into the low, tried again and failed again. So we saw that after the high, go back to 2013, we saw a big run up, then we saw the market fall, try to come back, we got one, two, three, four, five weeks up, we saw volume come into the market as well and then as we got to the top, just started to peter out, the volume was overall declining. So we got the big volume into the highs, whales buying, selling actually, and a lot of retail buying. They're selling into the hype, into the tops. Then they're buying up some of these lows to test the market again, didn't happen. Buying the low, test the market again, market failed. Buying some of the lows, trying to test it again, and it failed. So this time it's just a last chance to clear out, flush out whatever they're holding. We come back down and the market kept going. Not saying we have to go down for three years, but we can see this every time. After the highs come in, market falls, we try to rally multiple times. Maybe we get a five week this time, but that doesn't mean we are out and clear. We're not out of the wood just yet. So that was after the three bull markets. We got one up through here, another in 2017, and then of course the quick bull market into 2019. And then we saw a, a repeat here five weeks up. So we're only two weeks up at the moment which means we could keep going. We've got a 50% level to contend with. We've got a downtrend to contend with. If we've got a break above 47K, then that's looking a lot more likely, but we want to get multiple closes and then a move up. But the thing that we fear, and I definitely fear as well, what we fear happening to us is that the market just runs up and takes off without us and we just miss all of the potential gains. And that's generally what happens to retail at these points. You're thinking, what if that happens again, we get this huge run up, we get this other huge run up and I miss out and I miss out, this happens again and we get it through here. We get this big run up multiple weeks in a row and then it never comes back to these lower prices. That's generally what we fear happening at these times. But what I see here is probably more like this sort of scenario playing, just like we saw in 2017, 2019, because we've already had this big move out and pretty much not that much time to consolidate after such a big move. We went up 1600% through here. We went up 350% through this range. We went up a lot of percentage through the, the low here from a hundred bucks to $20,000. We haven't really done anything just yet. So I'm of the belief we're more in this sort of zone waiting to see what happens, a test of these highs before we start to fade out again. What would change my mind from that? Well, it would have to be a solid break above 47K and consolidation of multiple weeks above that level before we start to climb 
again. Should we break above, come back under, and then start to consolidate above 40 and 42K? That's also a good sign as well. But obviously, we don't want to break down from the previous resistance levels, the support level, which will then become support levels. So that's what would change my mind about this zone not being uh, bearish, but actually being such a strong bull and we just missed the bottom. The other thing I do note is the volume has been declining on this whole period as well. We've had a test, like you can see here, some uh, whale buying, and we just have not had any good reactions of strong volume uh, moving north. So hopefully we see that now, we get a change into a bull, but if we don't, then I'm prepared for something like this to happen, where the market may just peter out, we lose interest, we lose volume, and the market falls again, like we saw in 2018, and again in 2014, after the 2013 run. And finally, the 50% zones. So we're looking from a recent swing high to the swing low. We topped out at 50% again, we take it back to 2014, we didn't even reach the 50% zone at this point, and then we fell again. And then of course, 2019, we reached the 50% zone, failed, and then tanked from that point. So where we currently sit is just under the 50%. This is the recent major low to the all time high. 50% is at around 46 and a half K. So that's why I wanna see it go above 47 and close for a few weeks. So we're still in this not out of the woods section of the market, but we have plenty of indicators to let us know when that does come. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think we are going for one of these moves? The thing that we fear, the market just running up and taking off without us, meaning the 28K low was the low. We'll never see a 28K low again. Or do you think we'll see the option two where the market uh, runs down, we have a few weeks up to test where the supply comes back into the market and then fall away from that point like we've seen on multiple occasions. Option one, option two, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, daily Q&As. If you wanna be a part of the Investor Accelerator, there's still a discount, a special going on. Check out the link down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Make sure you've liked, subscribed, and share the video with someone that you think will find value from it. I'll catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.